Hi, this is Bart Polson, and this video is for Behavioral Science 3010 Statistics for the Behavioral Sciences at Utah Valley University. In this video, we're looking at the questions on Quiz 4 for Chapter 7, which is about estimation. The first question is, imagine a sample with an N or sample size of 400 and a mean of 68 that comes from a population with a standard deviation of 20. Based on these data, what would be the 90% confidence interval for the population mean? And then, as a note here, use a z-score of 1.64 for a 90% confidence interval. And then we have a whole selection of numbers here. And the one that you're going to want to pick is D, that the 90% confidence interval goes to a low end of 66.36 and a high end of 69.64. And here's how it works. First, we write down the parameters, a 90% confidence interval a mean of 68, a sample size of 400, and a standard deviation of 20. We get the standard error by doing um, the standard deviation of 20 divided by uh, the square root of the n, which is 400. That gets us 20 over 20, which reduces to 1. From there, we can plug numbers into the standard, uh, excuse me, into the confidence level uh, formula. We put the mean uh, as 68, and then we subtract or add a certain number of standard errors. We do 1.64 because that corresponds to 90% in a standard normal distribution. And we multiply it times the standard error of 1. So the multiplication here is easy. 68 minus 164 on the left and 68 plus 164 on the right. Do your addition and subtraction. You get 66.36 on the left and 69.64 on the right. And what it is is these are the lower and upper bounds for the 90% confidence interval based on this particular sample information. All right, number two. A confidence interval specifies a range of values for a parameter estimate, whereas a blank specifies just a single value for that parameter. And the choices are a sample value, an inferential statistic, a nominal estimate, or a point estimate. The answer is a point estimate. That gives just a single number. A sample value, you know, a sample value, it could be something like a mean, but it's not, an, it's not considered an inferential statistic. Like, but the point estimate is, even though the one is equal to the other. Uh, an inferential statistic, that can give any number of things. Confidence intervals are inferential statistics. And a nominal estimate, that's just you know nonsense that they made up. And again, take a look here. What we have on the top is a confidence interval, where we have a low end and a high end to the interval. So that's two numbers. And beneath it is the point estimate. It's just a single number. Take the sample mean, and that is the point estimate for the population mean. Number three, which is generally more precise in the statistical sense, a point estimate or a confidence interval? And you could choose a confidence interval, or they're the same, or a point estimate, or can't be determined without additional information. Well, the answer is a point estimate, and you have to remember what we mean by precision here. Uh, this is our little target metaphor here, where we talked about pre precision and accuracy. And precision means how tightly grouped are your uh, things. How close are your observations to each other? So, for instance, on the far left of this one, we have a precise grouping. They're really the you know all the um, the hits are really close to each other, but they're off target. On the far right, we have one that's on target, and uh, which means it's accurate. Accurate means centered on the target. Precise means uh, close together. And a point estimate, because it has zero width, is of course going to be the most precise, because you can't get any more precise than zero. Um, but, you know, it's almost guaranteed to be inaccurate. Anyhow, let's take a look at number four, which is, which is generally more accurate in the statistical sense, a point estimate or a confidence interval? And we have the same choices as before, except in this time, a confidence interval is going to be the answer. And the reason for that is because a confidence interval covers a range. And so it's more likely to actually include the true value. On the other hand, with a point estimate, you're basically guaranteed that it's not going to match. And because you allowed no wiggle room, you will be inaccurate. Um, anyhow, it gets back to the target metaphor here. The last question for uh, the fourth quiz is, a point estimate for the population mean is based on what? The sampling distribution of means, the sample size, the sample mean, or normally distributed data only? Well, it's the sample mean, because the sample mean just, you know, you re-identify it as the uh, point estimate for the population mean. Now, the sampling distribution of means, yeah, that's something that the means go into, and if we were doing a confidence interval, then that's what we would use. But we're not doing a confidence interval, we're doing a point estimate, it's different. 
sample size doesn't work into it. Normally distributed data are always nice to have, but it you know the procedure works either way. Anyhow, that is the last question on the last quiz for chapter seven. And hopefully you're feeling ready now because you're gonna see these same questions on the graded post test that's due on Wednesday night. And you'll see the same questions when you go to the testing center for exam two in the end of March. Anyhow, that's it folks, and thank you very much.